Wolf Dog Nation, thank you so much for tuning back in here once again for our, for part two of our interview here with Big Game Boomer. If you haven't already checked out part one, make sure to go check that out first and foremost. This is again, we kind of talk a little bit about you know how we got started, kind of what the goals were. Let's talk about actually some of his lists as well. Uh, you know, so make sure to go and check that out first of all. And also, too, just as a reminder as, as well, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so that way you don't miss out whenever we release new NC State content. Give this video a like, so that way the YouTube algorithm will put this video in front of more NC State fans. And also, too, give us a follow, Tuffy Talk now on Twitter or Instagram. But, John, you know, one of the things I got to jump in, obviously, you know, there's a list that is just sitting in the back of NC State's minds and has been sitting in, in the back of NC State's minds for as long as it's been in existence, and they will be thinking about it probably until it either happens or it doesn't happen. And and and, and for those who don't know what I'm talking about, that is you obviously putting your, your college, 2022 football season tier list, and you had like tier one, tier two. And of course, you know, and, and obviously the, 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 uh, the basically the, I guess, the idea was basically tier one is your college football playoff predictions. And for those who haven't seen mm-hmm. it, there are some names up there which which you know everybody would guess. Obviously, mm-hmm. Alabama, Ohio State, Utah was interesting, but I but I mean that's yeah. not like a crazy one. Uh, and then NC State, and you know of course that when that when that you know when that went out there, everybody just has exploded. <laughs> and uh, NC State fans alike, everybody it absolutely exploded. So first of all. You know, I know we kind of talked a little bit about this already, but we do got to give you props because as of recently, uh, even like uh, the AC Network, they have a potty, uh, podcast with uh, Kelly Grimlick and uh, some, uh, I can't remember the guy's name as well. But Eric. 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 Yeah, something like that. Yeah. McLean, and, McLean. And, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, 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 they, McLean, yeah. And, and they've come on talking about this day and, and saying, you know, yeah, I mean, I, we, we believe that in state could be an ACC, you know, championship winner and all that jazz. So, Got to give you props that you're the first, at least from what we've seen, the first media um, outlet that's not NC State mm-hmm. to give NC State that much hype. Because one thing, one one uh, example I do remember was back in 2016 when we had Ryan Finley and uh, Chubb and Garrett Bradbury and Nahim all Alder. those guys. And there was a yeah. former offensive lineman that was an ESPN analyst that put us in his Cole college football playoff. Yep, Cole Kublik. That's it. it That's Cole. it. Cole Kublik. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. And and he put us in his college football playoff, and and that was kind of the same thing. Everybody was like, "Whoa!" Like, <laughs> okay, then. So, uh, and we not all we all know how that year went. You know, we'll, 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 we won't we'll, we'll refuse to talk yeah. about that. Moving but, on. Uh, yeah, no, moving on. So <laughs> a, anyway, uh, yeah. So 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 uh, so let's talk about that though, real quick though. So so yeah. so what is your 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 grip with with Clemson? I'm curious. My beef with them? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I actually grew up a Clemson fan. I am oh, cool. uh, I'm from, yeah, I'm from South Carolina. Grew up in Georgia, mm. but from South Carolina. So I, mm. I've, I was a fan during kind of, a, you know, as a kid during kind of, I guess, the dark days of Clemson before they blew up. <laughs> um, yep. So I've just seen, you know, over the past decade, all these bandwagon fans come out of nowhere. Other stadiums, seems like it's never full anymore um, or, or they just go expecting to win. I used to go to games where you didn't, you had no idea if you were going to win and the death Valley was just crazy. Um, atmosphere was, was absolutely lit. And now it's just not like that at all. Winning, winning like that kind of numbs a fan base to it. I think they, they over appreciate what it what men, means to win like that. So that's kind of why I give Clemson a hard time um, just because they're not the Clemson that I grew up rooting for. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Well, well, and you know, and obviously too, like one of the things that, that kind of bugs me as well a little bit is, you know, with like with Dabo, like I'm, I'm overall, I'm a huge respecter of Dabo. You know, I think he's a, yeah. he's a family man overall. He's, he's, he's a great person, you know, just sometimes he's, interesting like for example like you know in his huge gripe about you know if they if they pay start paying college football players and then, then i'm out of here and of course here we are they're paying college football players and he's still here he's so still it's here like, yeah you know, you know first first and foremost but also too honestly i think that his decision about and again we're going to talk a little bit about this too because 
me personally, I do not understand whatsoever why Clemson is getting so much hype besides just the fact that it's Clemson. But because also too, yeah. on top of it, is you could have like if you're Dabo, you could have gone and hired any coordinator you wanted to replace Venables and offensive coordinator. You could have hired any co- any offensive coordinator, but you literally hired a position coach for both of them and promoted them, which to me seems mm-hmm. like either a, a a that is a make or break it move. Like it, it, if it works out, great. But if it doesn't work out, then 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 it, it, it's it's proof is in the pudding. It just seems like to me that it would that was more of a move of like I'm gonna do I'm doing a favor for you know somebody that's close to me rather than maybe what's best for the program in my head. Because if you would have hired like you know I'm just throwing a name out there like the Texas offensive coordinator or like some big name schools offensive coordinator and they didn't work out then fans would be like, well, you know, okay. I mean, you know, it is what it is. But, like, if you hired a position coach and it didn't work out, it's like, well, like, what do you expect kind of deal? So so those are really two things in my head is his talk about, you know, if, if players start getting paid, I'm, I'm leaving. And then the coordinator saying it just seems kind of a little bit of a weaker move, which I'm not necessarily against at being yeah. an NC State fan because, hey, we're going up and hopefully, you know, they're kind of coming down a little bit. But, they're going down. You know, I want to kind of get your thoughts on that. Yeah, so let me ask you guys a question. Why is Nick Saban the greatest head coach in college football history? He has greatest. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, his, yeah. his he can he can turn over his staff and with no problem. Well, the beauty of Saban is he his ability to adapt to every single thing that college football has thrown at him. He hated the spread offense. Hated it. Wanted to get the officials to start, you know, calling the hurry up. But what did he do? He's like, I'm going to hire some some spread offense coordinators. We're going to have better players. We're going to beat you, you know, you know, just through the air now. Not his old smash mouth style football. Um, the transfer portal. You see what he's doing in the transfer portal. He's embracing it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's they they bring in the best transfers every year now. They get the best guys. They, I mean, you saw Jameer Gibbs and uh, Jermaine Burton. Uh, or they got Eli Ricks from LSU. Um, so he's embraced that. He's embracing NIL. Um, you know, Bryce, Bryce Young's making over a million dollars a year, supposedly. Um, but Dabo, he's a great coach, but he is very stubborn to his ways. He has one way that he thinks is the model for being successful, and he doesn't he, he, he doesn't want to embrace any changes. You see – they do not use the transfer portal at all. I think they just took their first uh, player this year, mm-hmm. and he was a player that had transferred from Clemson. So, it, it, mm-hmm. you know, he's he, he doesn't want to adapt. He, you know, we know he doesn't like NIL. Um, so that's my thing with Dabo, and you're exactly right. He did, he did not want to bring in, you know, some high-profile name coordinators. He just hired guys, you know, just like they're getting a promotion. And we're going to find out very quickly if that if that pans out or not. If if the culture that he thinks he's built, which he has, he's built a great culture. If that trumps, yep. you know, the the skill set and talent of coordinators that he could have gotten from the outside market. Um, so so that's my issue with Clemson. Um, with, with with you know they they have a great defense. They're they're going to have the, one of the best defenses next year, I think for sure. Um, you look at the numbers last year. I think Wisconsin was the only team that gave, that gave up less. <laughs> yeah, lost that's Brett funny. Venables. So I mean, that, that that's my yeah, thing. Is lost Brett Venables. Again, you, you're going to feel it if you're Clemson. You're going to feel losing Brett Venables. You can't ignore that. Yeah. like like he's 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 a wizard. He's a magician as a defense coordinator. That dude has been a thorn in NC State in in, in every single ACC team side for years. And so that's why I'm saying that. Yeah. That's why I was thrilled to see him go to Oklahoma. Because I'm right. like, Thank I was goodness. so happy. Oh, I, yeah. I was like, get Same him here. out of here. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, so, but that's the thing. That's Clemson. I mean, are they going to, I think this year is a, is a very telling sign of his, if Clemson is going to be a yearly mm-hmm. contender, or if this is going to be something where they're just, they are good, you know, elite, I guess, every two to three years. I think this year will tell us a lot. Mm-hmm. I think for me, for the, for the Clemson portion of that, I think the defense will probably be okay because they still have great, sure. great talent on that side. Yeah, sure. And if you think about it, the guy that was under Venerables, if, if he stays to Venerables' philosophy and, and thinking, they should be fine, at least for the next year or two. 
It's the offensive side where you have to worry because they really struggled when, and then Tony Elliott left and took the UVA job and then you hired within. So you're, that I think is the bigger gamble than the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, Cause you, you definitely need to see improvement with your quarterback. Um, obviously, you know, Shipley will be Shipley as long mm-hmm. as he stays healthy. Um, you know, and that might be something that they, they change. They're going to be, they might be a, a really run heavy team this year and, and make the quarterback a game manager, depending on how that plays out for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And let me ask, let me ask you one question, John, too. So I don't know if you've yeah. seen this, uh, but uh, you know, they've released some spreads uh, for some of the games and one that came out already was the Clemson NC State game, and Clemson is right now favored hmm. by six and a half points. And so I don't know if you'd seen that ahead of uh-huh. time or if you haven't. Had not I'm seen it. Your initial um, thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I had not seen the lines yet for the games. It, if I was gonna, I think yeah. excluding the Clemson game because it's it's at it's in Death Valley. I think uh, yeah. I think NC State should be favored in every single game. Uh, this season, I, I mean the the Clemson game. If if that game is played in Raleigh, I, I think Clemson just because they're Clemson would be probably like a three and a half point favorite or something. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah no, I, that that yeah. line seems pretty fair. So, yeah. So so is that the game that you think that's going to be State's hardest game this year? Is going to be that Clemson game? Absolutely. There's two games on the schedule that I think are are yeah, um, Clemson on September 24th. Uh, first game in the ACC, I think that's going to be just uh, it's huge. But but you could still lose that game huge. and still still mm-hmm. you know potentially make the college football playoff. But the game that I'm concerned about the most for NC State is Week One at East Carolina. That game has just yes. circled all kinds of trouble for me. I, I, I trap, I'm, yeah, trap. Huge trap. You know, East Carolina mm-hmm. wants to <laughs> yep. beat the hell out of you guys and. <laughs> Uh, That's their Super I'm Bowl. Just concerned. Yeah, they, they, I mean, all off season they're training for that game, getting ready for it. That's oh yeah, NC State. You know, their ticket sales everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's a game I'm really well, worried about. I'll be happy when that's over. Well, well, so and, we- and I, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, and, 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 and you know, John, I mean, obviously, like that's a game that that like we've said multiple times on live streams, whatever it is that. That's a game that to any NC State fan or any fan within North Carolina or if even from around North Carolina knows how big that game is. But, like, you know, if you're like, you know, Robert Griffin the th- or you know, RG3 or whatever and you don't know anything about EC versus NC State, you're like, yeah, NC State should win that game, no problem. Like, that's 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 an easy game. And it's like, no, it's not. No, it is not. <laughs> it is not. Uh, but, no. well, I mean, like, but, 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 but the one thing which I'll say about, though, which kind of why I don't necessarily – categorize as a trap game is because they're thinking about because again usually a trap game to me is kind of like a game between a big game and another big game where it's like a team that can kind of sneak up on you a little bit but there's nothing that's going to sneak up on us to about ecu because just like they've been like we're we're thinking about them too i I guarantee you doran is a one game at a time we are not going to look past ecu because i mean because i i know that Doran, he he holds grudges. There's no doubt he holds grudges. Oh yeah, and I know that does. that from the ECU game of 2016 and seeing Scotty Montgomery and him run across the sideline, ooh, and putting up the the crossbones and all that jazz. Like you know, he's thinking about that. So yeah. that that's why to me, I I feel more confident about that game honestly than I probably should. But also too, because I think that last year and and two years ago was a huge step in the right direction where we've now have made some comeback games that we didn't expect. We have come back from being down at halftime. You know, we've we've made clutch moments. I mean, the Clemson game last year, like any other NC State team after missing that regulation kick would have lost that game. Ten times out of ten. Yeah. Up like a lot of times so out of ten, NC they would have lost it every single time. Well, and that's <laughs> he what said I mean. that was so NC State. <laughs> it, it was. I was, I was. And so yeah, really yeah. for us to still come back and win, like that that to me speaks volumes about where this program is volumes so and again it's not something that you could just change overnight it takes time it takes the right players it takes the right coaching staff it, like it, it's it's like clemson had to ha, clemson had to learn it and it really took until deshaun watson came but not with taj boy like I, I think it really took when deshaun watson came that's when they started to learn how to win and I think we've kind of yeah. gotten to that point. Not, you know, not, 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 not trying to like knocking on wood over here, but I'm just saying it's, it's factual at this point. I've seen it for two years now. So, 
Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dressup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Dressup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Dressup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. I'm not really worried about the ECU game because like, I feel like we're not necessarily going to take it as our bowl game, but I feel like in their heads they're going to be like, all right, like because their season got canceled before it should have even gotten canceled, obviously. So I feel like they're going to go out way harder than they usually would. Yeah. But I hate playing. They got Google. their bowl game canceled, I hate too. playing yeah. Google. Yep. Yeah. So. So, so, so in order for state to obviously make it to the uh, CFP, we, we have to go to an ACC football championship game. Mm-hmm. Who, who, who do you see us playing in that game and getting by? God, I think, I just think that division is, is nowhere as near as strong. Um, <laughs> as it usually, I mean, it's been that way for years. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, God, I mean, I've thought about it. I, I want to say Miami is maybe the front runner to win that division. Um, just because yeah. I really like what Tyler Van Dyke did last year. Um, I think Mario Cristobal is going to, and they hired Josh Gaddis as their offensive coordinator. I think they're going to be a lot more physical this year. Um, so I, I would say either Miami and I guess Pitt, just because they return like their whole offensive yeah. line defense. Keaton Slovis, I don't know if he's going to be good. Jordan or not. Addison. Never, oh, wait. Yeah, Jordan Addison's gone. Um, and and they, they, they think they're going to be better without him. If you talk to Pitt fans, um, and that's just not the case. And I, I I watched Keaton Slovis. That's the easy way out. Yeah. I watched Keaton Slovis at USC and I mean, he can throw. Yeah, he can throw, but I I just, I was not, just wasn't impressed. I wasn't blown away. He's not Kenny Pickett and he doesn't have Mark Whipple and, uh, Mm -hmm. Brennan Mary in there coaching him up uh, with their offense. Um, so We'll see. I think the winner uh, comes out of y'all's division, and I, I get them confused all the time. Y'all are in the Atlantic, right? And the Correct. other one's the Correct. Crystal. Okay, I, I get those two. Yeah, yeah. They, they just confuse the heck out of me. But at okay. least for one more year. Yeah, they're changing yeah. it. Yeah, at least for one more year. So, yeah. so, so let me ask you this question, guys. I saw I, I saw an NC State fan comment on this, and I want and and I thought it was interesting. But just as a kind of reminder for you, John, so the Atlantic Division is made up of and and Greg and McKenzie fill me in if I miss one, but obviously NC State, yep. Clemson, Florida State, Louisville, Boston College, Syracuse, Wake mm-hmm. Forest, right? You got okay. it. Yeah. So yep. I mean, pretty much every team on that list except for Syracuse. I see being a potential of competing right there at the top of the AC yeah. Atlantic this year. I mean, every single one of those, which is another thing which still bugs me too, is that literally they have the odds right now that basically you could bet either Clemson to win the Atlantic or the field to win the Atlantic and get, and get your money. I'm like Boston college, Louisville, Wake Forest, us <laughs> and Florida state maybe. And, and you know, and I could take any of those or Clemson to win the Atlantic like can get any money. I'm I'm taking the field all day long. I think Wake Forest and us are the the high, highlights. Yeah. But I think that Louisville's a dark horse. I think Boston yeah. College with their quarterback coming back, mm-hmm. they're a dark horse as well. So you know, I think that's crazy. But obviously, with us, because one uh, state fan asked, do you think that besides the SEC West, that the Atlanta Division this year is set up to be the second best division in college football this year? Yeah, it's definitely. I know, I know it's kind of a I mean, spot thing, but yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I definitely, I definitely think so. I mean, I think uh, from the conference overall, I, I, you look at the quarterback play in the ACC and all the returning quarterbacks. Um, I think the ACC mm-hmm. has the most talent at quarterback of any conference. And then, yeah, look at the look at the Atlantic Division. So you've got Devin Leary at NC State. We know he's a stud. Sam Hartman. We know he can sling it. He's a stud. Clemson. That's their biggest weakness. Boston College, you got Phil Yurkovic, who's coming back off an injury. He can throw. Um, and uh, Malik Malik Cunningham at uh, Louisville, he's kind of like mini Lamar Jackson 2.0. Um, and they return a lot of guys. So, yep. yeah, I, I would say it's going to be a Florida very, State with Travis Scott. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, – We'll see. Yeah, we'll see with Florida State. I, I, I still <laughs> am not 
solo on them. But but yeah, uh, but yeah I would say it's definitely going to be one of the more uh, tougher divisions this year for sure. Yeah. And, and again, I, I think that to me, it's kind of like this year with the expectations that we have, I want the toughest games possible. I want as many mm-hmm. top 10 matchups as we can. I want as many top 25 matchups as we can. I want it all. I don't care. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's like, you know, I'd rather have the best 11 and one season that we've ever seen rather than maybe like an easier 12 and 0 schedule. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, I'd rather, you know, yeah. be, be thrown to the, be thrown to the wolves, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, ironic choice of words there, but you know, it's just like Wake Forest, I think is going to be up there. I, cause uh, you know, and here, let me ask you this too, because I, I know you've done uh you know, but like, I know you've done a top 25. I know you have NC state is a top four, obviously, because you put them in your college football playoff, but mm-hmm. I mean, like, what do you see as kind of like a fair, like AP poll preseason ranking for NC state? Like, you know, what would you say is kind of the number that like, if I see it here, if it's higher, I think they're maybe a little bit too high. If it's lower, I think they're a little bit too low. Yeah. I think that they should be a top 10 team. Uh, just based on the returning production on defense. And I mean, even in, you bring your quarterback back, um, but I'm not mm-hmm. the media that votes on that. And yeah, right. I guess realistically, I think they should be in that 12 to 15 range. That's where they might be. Now, if they're in the 15 to 20 yeah. range, I'm going to be ticked off uh, that that's just a lack of respect. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. It could, it could easily happen because I mean, yeah, you, you, a lot of those people that vote don't watch. Actually We're not watch UNC. The games. Yeah, yeah. So you, they haven't given NC yeah. State the yeah. benefit of the doubt yet. So sure. that's where I think they and should. Thanks be. to big game, I already have a already have my tab pulled up for the Peach Bowl tickets. Nice, <laughs> His, thanks, easy drive. Yeah, you don't even hey, have to no. fly down there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I already have them up and pulled up. Hey, hey, <laughs> we're, we're going to pull a, a, a Michael Irvin, you know, to the Cowboy fans. Hey, Cowboy fans, go ahead and get your Super Bowl tickets. Go ahead and get them. <laughs> yeah. Before they get too expensive. No, no, we're not, no, no, no state no, fans no. going to do that. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no state fans going so, to do that. Go ahead, Greg. So we know, we, we, yeah, we know, we know where you were taking us, but just take us through some of your. NC State fans won't agree with this, but your logic <laughs> of why you um, why you came to your conclusions that State should be a CFP team because um, we were talking about it off air. You were one of the first ones to just get on top of that mountain and start shouting, "You uh, uh, UNC stinks and NC State is all that." Now, granted, I added that first part, but <laughs> yeah. Um, what what uh, what 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 led you to to say that we're a CFP quality team? Yeah. So when I look at when I'm just looking at the ACC, I'm looking at the most balanced team uh, that can, that has. I think the most balanced team gives you gives you the best chance to win the conference. So when we look at Clemson, okay, they have a great defense, but we know their quarterback play is a very big concern. So we don't know how their offense is going to be. Big changes at coordinator, uh, offense and defense. You look at Wake Forest, you know. High flying, you know, throwing the ball all over the place. High scoring offense. Their defense is atrocious. I mean, they hired a guy. They're going to try and fix it, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be they're holding people to like 15 points a game. So their defense is going to be an issue. So those are the three. And then we've got NC State, who I think I think those are the three big contenders in the Atlantic. So NC sure. State. So you bring NC state brings back basically their whole defense and with injuries and stuff y'all had last year, you guys bring back, I mean, more guys that had started, you know, started in, in the starting defense, uh, than like anybody. And so you, you have that defense and then you have Devin Leary, who I think is a pl- huge playmaker can make, you know, make the big throws in clutch in clutch time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got great red zone numbers. And so I see that when you pair that defense with that quarterback play, that gives you the ingredients for having a really big year. And that that that's kind of where I came to my you know conclusion that I think NC State can make the playoff because I think they can I think they can beat Clemson and Death Valley. I think they can beat Westford or excuse me, um, drawing a blank the Wake Forest, Wake Forest, Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Virginia. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So. <laughs> So um, that's what the, the biggest issue with NC State is, like you guys have said, they got to get that mindset. I, like Clemson used to do this all the time. They call it Clemsoning, where they lose a game they shouldn't, they had no business losing. 
So I don't know if we call that what NC stating or wolf packing. NC state, um, NC state stuff. Yeah. NC state stuff. NC state, okay. stuff. No, NC state stuff, but change your, it's but, a different change your last state word. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I like that. That sounds a lot better. So you can't lose to a two and four Miami team by one point. You can't lose yeah. to Wake Forest mm-hmm. on the road that you've beaten and had, you know, had success against by like three points. Those games you have to win. And that's the biggest question yeah. mark for me is, is can they get over that hump and win those games yeah. that, you know, there's not a huge national spotlight, but, but you just, you can't, you cannot lose those games. Um, so, so, so yeah, let me ask that's you, where I came let me ask you one more. Let me ask you one more question though, to kind of wrap this thing up here. So, so if yeah. I were to tell you, Hey, listen, so NC state is not going because I, you know, I'm not going to say, say they don't, I'm going to say they don't win the Atlantic this year. I'm just going to tell you they don't win the Atlantic. And so after hearing that, what would you say that the reason is for them, for NC state, not winning the Atlantic? Like, what do you think if, they, if we don't win it, what do you think holds it back? What was What's our demise? Right. Well, if, if they don't win the Atlantic, they will either have been really hit by the injury bug or they did not find the production at running back uh, with, you know, filling in for Zonovan yep. Knight and Ricky Person um, and receiver yep. with, you know, Amika Mezzi. I'm less concerned about wide receiver, but that'll be, mm-hmm. you got to be able to run the ball to be successful. So um, that'll, that'll yep. I think that'll be, if they don't win the Atlantic, it's going to be because they couldn't find enough production at running back and wide receiver. Yep. That's kind of. Yep. You are, you and me are on the same page there, John. Yeah. So, With all your uh, answers, you are now yeah. an honorary Wolfpack fan. Oh, <laughs> I do my homework, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Well, John, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, my friend, for joining us. Really do appreciate it. And I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, it, it definitely gets my, you know, my excitement. You know, right. just flowing I'm for, ready. For I got goosebumps. Here. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> I'm ready. We're getting ready for it. 87 yeah. days. Yeah. 87 days. Yeah. Here before you um, know it. Not from the Great. time. Hey, we, released. We, yeah. <laughs> hey, we normally, uh, we normally throw our wolfies up. All right. So let's throw some wolfies up. All okay, right, I'll so do the, a great episode. But then I'm going to do horns on. down. You'll, you'll work with me. No, no, no. Yeah, and that's where I was going next. We'll, nah, we'll you do down. the wolfies. Yeah. We'll do horns down. We'll do horns down. Go. Yeah, you got it. Always yeah. horns down. There we, we go. got you, man. There we go. We, we got you. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, well, I'll, I'll uh, you know, to John, I'll go ahead and throw in there for you. Definitely make sure again hit that subscribe button for us if you don't mind, so that way you don't miss out whenever we release new NC State content. But also to uh, go check out uh, John and the Big Game Boomer Show on uh on youtube as well again that uh, did a great interview with shane beamer which is one i i watched the whole really the good. whole thing i love uh i'm a fan of shane beamer you know for those obviously most for those who don't know uh, my wife went to south carolina so i'm a huge i mean i'm sorry i'm a huge shane beamer <laughs> fan but i'm i am a fan of south carolina but i love i love shane beamer i think he's great you mean you're a huge fan of your wife who's a fan of south carolina i'm a huge fan of my wife so therefore i'm a fan of south carolina <laughs> and therefore i'm a huge fan of shane beamer that that's kind of my, my walker but so yeah so, so john do you have that same logic with your wife being an uh, oklahoma state fan or you tell her she's on her own island you know, I root for OSU every now and then. They they're not really OU's like, big rival. I mean, Texas is the is the hated rival. OU, you know, we all right. live and work in the same place. Or OSU, so we we don't. There's not that burning yeah. hatred for OSU like there is for Texas. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, that makes sense. So, <laughs> all right, y'all. Well, again, as always, to just a reminder as well, give us a follow, Tuffy Talk Down on Twitter or Instagram. And uh, if you haven't already, for some reason, give Big Game Boomer a follow as well. But I'm sure mm-hmm. if you're listening to us, that you're following him as well. But thank you all so much for tuning in. And hey, as always, go pack, y'all. We'll see y'all.